Lake Oahe has done done us wrong except for old Canterbury. What'd you finish, dude? 23rd? 23rd. Well, we got little checks. Me and Matt got little checks. Enough, enough to buy. Little check better than no check. Little check is better than no check. Just like that, two in a row. I can put up all the fairy wands and I can break out all the bait casters. I left all my uh, spinner rods on the deck of my boat hoping somebody would steal them off so then I wouldn't be able to fish with them. I might leave one in the boat just because you never know. Got about an eight hour drive. Let's get it going. A little unstoppable today. That's what we're going to call this whole video series, unstoppable. We all have to make the classic. Right now you're in the classic. You're in the classic. Ball is in my court to make the classic. The pressure's on and there is real pressure. Low no pressure's on. Low pressure. I gotta catch them. I gotta catch like, catch them good. Yeah. We gotta wash all, all the funkiness off this boat. go that's a long ways real long way. we just passed past Matt he left about an hour and a half before us <laughs> when the speed limit is uh, 65 he goes 63 that's what Paul Paul does Canterbury on the other hand total opposite he's already at the house literally so we'll have a uh, tomorrow off and that'll be our get ready day get the boat ready so tonight we're gonna go try to find some good for dinner This is where y'all gotta pitch tent and get your beds. Made it. About time. About time. You got this place figured out yet? Yep. You got a cool little bed right here. Really? Yeah. Getting cool and I like yours. What is it? The master. This is the nice one? Yeah. Nice. Dang. I got it. This is the dark room. I kind of like the... Yeah. Dang, look at this. I like the way they, they set all this up. A little, uh, like a barn style. We're in a barn. Yep. One bathroom. One in the whole place? Yep, right there. Seriously? I see it. Heck yeah. Okay. All right. Bedroom two, bedroom three, bedroom four. Okay. All right. Oh no. <laughs> All night that train's going to go by. Really? In South Dakota? Yeah. And he's begging. Yeah. If we can fit. Y'all had three of them. I'll sit in the back. back. Here is, is the thirsty yeah. turtle. Thirsty turtle. So big. Are you a turtle? What kind of turtle are you? So I, I've eaten dinner in here before. Last time we last time we had a tournament here, we rented the house up on that hill. Tournament that it flooded is the last time I've been. I guess that was the last time I was here too. You came in 2020, didn't you, FLW? No. 2020 I was doing open. Oh, no, you didn't even fish FLW. No. That was the last time. The last time I fished here, there was a few fish spawn. I caught them in that it's right here it started. I caught them right here at Stone. Yep. Sure did. A long time ago. Yep. And that, I, I eat dinner in here every night. It's really? Right the house right on the road. Matt, when was the last time you were here? That tournament. The year Wren was born. When it flooded. 2017. May of 2017. What I remember is me and Matt were working together, and Matt, Matt and I had went to, we had found all this uh, smallmouth, and he, he was boat like one, and I was like last boat. So I took off. I think I was. <laughs> it was. It was a big gap. Yeah. And when I pulled up, when I pulled up to the deal, I, I come rolling in. It's been like 25 minutes. 
And I'm and I pull in. And I'm like, hey man, what, what you got? He goes, I got about sixteen. And I'm like, all right, shut up. What do you got really? You got one yet? And he's like, no, I got sixteen. I'm like, hey, you don't. By the time he catches another one, he goes, yeah, I got about sixteen. I'm like, dang, dude. Leave right him alone. Let me catch a few. Right. A smallmouth in dirty water on the bed is the dumbest bass you've ever met. Yeah. Hundred percent. Catch him with live scope. That's we didn't doing. have live scope back then. I did. No, you did. Yes, I did. In seventeen. I, I've had live scope for like six or yes, seven or eight yes, years. Yes, did because he was looking at them rock veins and stuff with him. Yeah. yeah. Was it good back then? Yeah. yeah. It wasn't bad. He was like the only one in the tournament that had it. Yeah. He had it. Yeah. When you, when you had it and nobody else really had it, even if it wasn't that good, it was awesome. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, Yeah, you had a big advantage then. Those jalapeno ones were good. Dude, those jalapeno are you scared you buy in the bag up there at the store? Oh my God. Are they good? I gotta take the cooler back uh, home. That's what I remember lacrosse for right yeah. there. You can they tell sell the them things around the house, dude. They ain't even close. No. no. Like the all day, every day. No, it's, 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 Okay. All right, so this advanced auto parts has mobile Delvac oil, okay? Now, mobile Delvac is sponsoring this video. As a matter of fact, they're sponsoring this entire video series, guys, and we're calling it Mission Unstoppable. As a matter of fact, they even created a website called Mission Unstoppable that tells you all about Mobile One oil, mobile Delvac oil, which is the oil that we use in our truck, and here's why. For me personally, it's peace of mind, right? I mean, we put 50, 60,000 miles a year on my Trocar Battle Wagon, and with the mobile Delvac oil, I'm not, I don't have to go and get my oil changed as much. It has longer life than your traditional oils. It's gonna protect your engine better, okay? We've been 21 days straight on the road, and that is big time. I don't have to worry about getting the oil changed, I can worry about catching fish. And I also have to worry about making the classic, and making cuts, and doing everything that we need to do this week, because this is an important week. This is where the rubber meets the road, last event of the year, and how fitting, Mission Unstoppable, perfect name for this series. And actually, Mobile Delvac has a website called Mission Unstoppable, and we're gonna put the link in the description. We want you to check it out. And if you click on that, you're gonna see all kinds of things about Mobile Delvac oil and ways to protect your engine, keep your truck and your cars running smooth. So, I'm gonna run in there. McCoy, if you do me a favor while I'm at the meeting tonight, uh, there's a little place you can go. There's a mobile store actually get the oil changed. I'm gonna go buy it in here and uh, and that's that so uh, A lot on the line this week guys mission unstoppable. I like it We almost got the boat rigged up. The tackle. You can look out there and see all that milfoil, all the grass is up. It's the time of the year that you catch them on frogs, buzz baits, swim jigs, all around that grass. So, and the, but the unique thing about this, this lake, okay, and I say lake, it's really the Mississippi River, it's Pool 8, okay, so it's Pool 8, which is about 30 miles long. It's a labyrinth of, of channels and backwater areas and, and just grass and just shallow. It's a shallow fishing paradise. But you do have largemouth and smallmouth in here. So there's two species that you can target. The pool below, which is pool nine. I don't really know much about pool nine, but it's similar to pool eight. It's just a giant labyrinth of channels and backwater areas. And then pool seven, which is the one above, Lake on Alaska, is more of a lake, more like Okeechobee. A lot more open water. I, you know, I've never really fished there either. I've mostly spent all my time on eight. So we're gonna go on eight in the morning and see how it goes. And if we like what we, we're grooving with, then we'll probably stay on eight the whole practice. But, you know, I'm gonna be fishing uh, for largemouth and smallmouth tomorrow. So we're gonna mix it up kind of with two different approaches, try to, try to figure them out. But again, everything's super shallow. It's gonna be fun. We're gonna go visit a good friend of mine. And I, and I have some uh, lures some special jigs that he makes. Good friend of mine, Tom Monsoor. And he makes really good jigs and I'm gonna get some jigs from him and we're gonna maybe show you a few of his lure collection. He sold a lot of it, but he still has a bunch there. So we're gonna go say hi to old Tommy boy. This dude, if you know anything about bass fishing, and you know anything about swim jigs, 
This is the king, the father, the godfather of swim jigs. He's the one that kind of revolutionized this whole thing, Tom Monsoor. Good friend of mine. Love Tom to death, and we're going to come hang out with him. I've got some special swim jigs that I always get from him when I see him, and he's going to show us some of his lure collection, too. Hey, doggy, doggy. Hey, doggy, doggy. Hey, doggy. She'll, oh, yeah. she'll, she'll oh, kiss yeah. you. She'll kiss you to death. Good girl. Good girl. What's up, buddy? Good much. How you doing, man? Good. Good to see you. <laughs> yeah. Are you happy? This now? is McCoy. Glad to meet you, McCoy. How you doing? Last Hi. time I was in here, we ate pike. I was going to bring these down. And... That's where all the magic happens. Yeah, this is a stash. Dude, look at all these baits. <laughs> this is cool. <laughs> I had to make a new roll because the back stuff is it's so full back there. The, the, the lures in here, like, this is like. Look, oh my gosh. You that's, think that's a lot? That's even worse back there. You, you, put my lights. <laughs> Look at this. Oh my gosh. I'd say this is a little more tackle than I have. Organized too. And it's organized, yes. Look at this. It is. I mean, you want three and a half inch Cinco's? We have sink goes. You have more. There's more sink Gary Yamamoto in there than they have at the factory. Do they ever call you to chip stuff out when they're low on something? <laughs> Nobody should ever know this. <laughs> it's all sink goes. This is all sink goes. Those are original sink goes. Oh my gosh, it goes this way. Yeah. I've ne oh my goodness gracious, dude. This is this is next level. Yeah, this is so you don't run out. So if you if you ever ask, like if I said, hey, do you have this? Green pumpkin smoke with with chartreuse glitter with pink flake and he'll be like, yeah, got him in here somewhere. Yeah, somewhere. <laughs> this is the way we need our garage. We need our mind you a garage like this. And Tom makes all of his skirts. So what what I admire about Tom over the years is that like he takes his swim jigs and he ties every skirt himself, makes it like. And so when I would call him in practice, where I'd see him on the water, I'd pull up and I'd be like, hey, tell me the swim jig. What's the swim jig they're biting here? And he'd say, all right, Scotty. Here's the one I've got. I've got a, it's a white one with three strands of mylar and one purple strand. One purple strand. <laughs> and the next tournament would be like a black and blue with one pink strand and three oh, things of mylar. Oh my God, the pink one. That, yeah. was, that was where I, I should have won it down in. Uh, yeah, it's uh, uh, Chickamauga when it got, when it no, got muddy. No, where it was way in on the coast. We were back in some... Oh, like the Delta. Was it the Delta? No, thing? it was... God, I can't think of the name of that place. I took second. Uh, some guy named Sam beat me. That was Mobile. Yeah, it was... Yeah, it was, Pascula River. No, it was... There was a giant dike we had to go over to put in. Oh, at Chafalaya Basin. Chafalaya Basin. Chafalaya. And they wanted yeah. two strands of pink in a black and blue jig. <laughs> and I mean, they wanted it. <laughs> two strands only. That, Three strands, no good. No, it was unbelievable. And they ate that jig. <laughs> and then it got cold in the last day. The guy beat me, but it was one of them first tournaments where they changed the rules. They didn't go by the four-day total. They started over. I had seven pounds more than him for the four-day total. Oh, my gosh. But I took second. Look at these. These are classic. Yeah, those are some classic sunfishes. Look at those things. Those are wood even, some of them. Oh no. Those are wood ones there. God. But they still catch fish. I know. Everything, all my old stuff, is really the new stuff. Spy baits? The original spy baits I got hanging upstairs. They're made out of wood with three lead weights in them with big props, six hooks, giant treble hooks. They, they, everybody thinks the Japanese came up with it. But. No. No, this is all. There's a lot this of Japanese cool. stuff up there, though. I oh, know. Me medium spooks. Medium spooks. Oh, I bet. Oh, I bet there's a good one in here. Watch this. Watch this. I can already tell. Oh yeah, these are all the good ones. These are the. Those these, mystics are unreal. Yeah, these have no rattles. Okay. No. No rattles, and those are the old school with the with the <laughs> screw in type thing. To change the hooks out, you got to take a pair of little uh, sunglass yep. uh, screwdrivers. Yep. Now there was a. There was a, this one, this one right here. I almost won Beaver Lake on it. I finished third or fourth at Beaver. Really? God, I can't think okay. of the name they call that. Yeah. What is that color? I don't know. I, God, it's unreal. I know, so, it, I know it so well. I was up the War Eagle, 
and the fish were it was in May when yeah. they were there for a May tournament yeah. and there were still a few fish spawning yeah. and and I was catching a few in practice around these laydowns and stumps up there yeah. well you know, the tournament rolled and and I'm fishing I'd pull up to where I knew there was a fish spawning I couldn't yeah. see it and I'd pitch around nothing 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 and Todd Lee remember Todd Lee he had this spook on the old one no it was silent totally quiet yeah. and he would throw it when I would leave he would throw the spook up there and work it right through where I was and boom a big fish would blow up on it so after a while, he catches four or five fish like that. He's like, "Here, take the spook and, you know, fit, if you get your, you know." And so we're trading out. Like yeah. I'm using his spook. I agree. Well, he he gives it to me. Well, first of all, I put one on with the rattle in it, and I can't get bit. They, uh, you know, when they came out with those rattles, yeah. I hated them. But I he gave me the spook the next day, and I ended up coming in fourth on that spook. He goes, "I won't need it here. You take it." And it was the original one. So all that one knocker and all yeah. this, you know charging all kinds of money for them and the quiet ones were the ones that really did the most yeah. damage yeah look at that color that mystic color was something special yeah. let me tell you don't you think that would be a good one for the tournament it probably would <laughs> quiet like that nobody's throwing quiet no nobody is can i use this i'll yeah. bring it back yeah, you need to put good hooks on it that's though. not bad for practice it'd be okay yeah. those are those excaliburs but they're oh my god look at those things I know. they're bent out instead of bent in I mean, they're the opposite of what they should be. Look at what how they go. What color you think is better? I tell you, I caught more on this yeah. color than. I'm not, that's I'm why I, use these, that one. these I don't even use. I had stashed a yeah. bunch of these and in the pop R's yeah. even, but I'll sharpen them for you. Yeah, well, and yeah you got to. Before you go. You got to teach me how to sharpen again. Again. Scott's the only guy I know. Funniest story in the world. I tell all kinds of people this story. <laughs> I walk up to him one day. He tells me I just lost two eight pounders. We're in a, we're in a tournament at the weigh-in. He goes, I lost two big, two eight pounders today. I looked at him. I said, Scott, did you sharpen your hooks? And like a little kid, he goes, Yes. No. <laughs> just that quick. I couldn't believe he said it. You know, like a little kid. I, he got caught. Yeah. No, I didn't do it, Dad. I didn't do it. Oh my God. So he sharpened them. Yeah. I didn't lose any more fish. And every tournament. If at blast off at FLW, I'd pull up next to him and I'd say, "Here, here," and he would take his file and he'd go. And he wasn't the only guy. Yeah. Jimmy Houston, a bunch yeah. of other guys. Hey, sharpen yeah. this for me, quick. Yeah. Sharpen this. That's for all me he did quick. every morning: sit around and sharpen hooks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh! I think I'll catch him on that. Oh my god! Because everybody's gonna be throwing the noisy one. I'm gonna go through there and. Ooh, this is gonna ooh. be an unbelievable tournament. Yeah. I'm, you know, I'm not saying anything about anything, but this is yeah. gonna. The fish are going wild. Oh my god! It's like they just. It was tough. The last months, you know, 15, 16, maybe yeah. 17 pounds. Yeah. All of a sudden, two weeks ago, they broke loose. They are gonna have yeah. fun. This is gonna be a good tournament. There's gonna. There's gonna be some unbelievable TV, really? babe. Yeah. I'll, I've been telling everybody about your swim jigs. Not your secret ones, because we don't want to show your secret things yet. We're not showing secret. There's secret stuff. You can't see secret. You can see what everybody else sees. It's just the normal swim jigs. Just normal. Like, look at these things. Those are my stashes. Are these able to be seen? These are these are normal? Those are my good swim jigs. These are secret ones? No, they're okay, good. Okay, those are good? They're just okay. good ones. So look at this. Oh yeah. They're ready to that. go. Look at that. I mean, hand painted. Hand tied. Everything. Picked out hook. Perfect yeah. hook. Like that hook is, is he That's did. not the hook that comes when you buy one with you your name on it. You That's right. Buy, you can't buy that hook. That's right. It's a Gamagatsu cost fifty five cents. Wow. And I have to heat every one of them to fit the mold. Really? I mean it's a marathon. But if you want a hook that when they jump they can't throw it, yeah, that's what you got to do. Now when I get an eight pounder on and it jumps, or a five pound smallie, I don't care. Look at all this stuff. This is where all the jigs get made. He whittled this out of bamboo. Uh -huh. <laughs> those hooks are sharp. Yeah. The last time I was in here, this whole wall was all nothing but lures. The that, whole wall from from that window yeah. all the way around. Yeah. With solid lures yep. hanging on bamboo yep. rods. <clears throat> but this is what some of them look like. I got more over there. But Look at that. 
I mean, these, these these are the some of the nicest, neatest, oldest there is. They are so cool. What is this one called? That's a game. They call it a game fisher. Is that goofy looking or oh, what? Wow, look at that thing. Think of the action that had though. Have you ever oh, taken any of these back out and try to catch fish on them? No. Not too many, no. <laughs> Just the sunfish and the mice. The sunfish and the mice were my two favorites for fishing, yeah. and they still catch fish. You know, I mean, they got top waters that are just bizarre. Look at that. Thing. Look at that. For oh a top gosh. water, and the hooks go backwards yeah. for weeds. Man. I mean, they thought of everything. What do you call that one? A head and two ten. Really. And then there's a bigger one they call a slope nose, which are they're worth a lot of money. Wow. I, and I got some of them over in the other case. Wow. They're bigger. That is so cool. Yeah, it says right on it. Those down in Mobile. Lucky thirteen. Lucky thirteens down in Mobile were one of the hottest lures there were. Really? Yeah. It's unbelievable. With glass eyes, you know. Look at this thing. Though. Okay, now that's a real spy bait. That does sink. Oh yeah. They've got ones for the surface and ones for the bottom. Look at that. Dude, take that to Hartwell and someone of our cane pile. Wouldn't that be something? I bet they'd eat the mess out of it because they've never seen anything like oh. it. Think of the big ones, the big spy baits. Yeah, they're down here, right here. Yeah, I mean, they just it's unbelievable. Every color imaginable, too. And the hooks, there's so many hooks on them, it's unbelievable. I mean, mm -hmm. that's what this is what people used mm -hmm. if you could afford it. Back in the day, what did this lure cost? Probably a buck and a half. Wow, that was expensive back then. That was $25 now, $30. Right. It's and there's some five that, sets there, of hooks. And there's some that got two more in the middle, the bigger ones. I mean, they just look at it, they're caught. They're caught. Yeah. Isn't that something? That's something. That's amazing what they what did. The size of some of them. Look, there's those things you had in your box downstairs. Yeah, those pumpkin seeds. Yeah. They're still an unbelievable surface look. Mm. Unbelievable surface look. Mm. And these are all, these are all uh, Winchesters here. Really? And they are like, when you go up north or wherever mm -hmm. there's, these are, these are Winchesters. Look at that. They are like, they call them a crab wiggler. A crab wiggler? Wiggler, yeah. But I mean, up north where they have antique stores, they dream about having one of these really? in their store. Wow. One Winchester, you know, and I've got, God, I had, she's, I had almost a hundred of them. Really? Yeah. Well, that's awesome, Tom. Yep. I love, I love seeing all your stuff. It's, uh. No, there was a lot more of it. It's an honor to be able to hang out. <clears throat> honor to hang out with you. That's cool stuff. Go catch some fish. I'm going to go figure it out. We got three days to yeah, figure I it hope out. You do. If yeah. you run out of jigs, there's more jigs. You know. All right. you, yep. These are gross hooks. <laughs> I was you. gonna say I mean, they're so bad that they're, they're not they're, even worth it. Just leave it like that. That's be fine. All I'm trying to get is a blow up. Oh yeah. You hear that? Yeah. That's how bad they are. All right, buddy. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Time to get to bed. Yep. Good luck. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. That was so cool. See you know, Tom, those lures, I mean, that was classic stuff right there, guys. I mean, I'm telling you, that guy knows a thing or two about lures, fishing. He's, that's old school, that's the king of the king right there. I'm telling you, Tom Monsoor is the man. All right, so guys, we're gonna close the video out. Thank you so much for watching our travel vlog. Mississippi River is upon us. We're here at La Crosse. Cannot wait to get this thing started. So the very next video in this series is gonna be practicing. So this is gonna be a video, I think you're gonna love this one because it's so challenging, right? There's like a labyrinth of channels. We're gonna be jumping sandbars. It's shallow fishing at its best, smallmouth and largemouth. So it's gonna be just, I think, exciting to watch. So thank you so much. I wanna say a huge shout out to Mobile Delvac Oil for sponsoring this video guys i've been traveling all over the country and the mobile delvac has solutions to keep me running strong that's right mission unstoppable you know 50 60 000 miles on the road each year i have to focus on what's important and that's winning bass tournaments so do me a huge solid before you leave check out the cool website that we have mission 
unstoppable mobile Delvac. There are some solutions on how to keep your engine running strong and keep you mission unstoppable. So check it out, guys. Click the link in the description down below. And thank you very much. And get ready for the next video. We'll see you guys. Boom!